Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. One of our volunteers recently digitized some reels of film that we had in the collection down below. Uh, so we're going to go through one of them in a picture's worth a thousand words. I've been told that the uh, person doing the filming really lingers on some objects. So we have sped this 32 minute film up to 200%. Uh, just to make it a reasonable length of time. I don't think we're going to need uh, all of the lingering on this various artistic stuff. It seems like this filming was done um, by the Navy while the ship was in Bremerton to give to news medias and things like that. I've seen clippets, uh, snippets from this footage used in uh, like documentaries, news reports, things like that. So I suspect that's why there's a lot of artistic shots of this random piece of equipment or that anchor chain or whatnot that, that kind of linger. Uh, so we're going to go through this and uh, see what we've got. And Jim just transferred this at the beginning of the month. So this is my first time seeing this all the way through. So New Jersey is still in Bremerton, Washington. Uh, right across the pier from Missouri. This is 1981 or 1982 before the ship is pulled to Long Beach. You can see that her uh, bull nose has been cut open and they've got the anchor sitting up there, which they often do when they're towing the ship or when the ship is in mothballs. It may be that the anchor was deployed, because I don't see any chains from her here, and that the uh, that it has been pulled up by this crane right next to her preparatory to the ship being towed out. Here's one of the five inch guns all sealed up for mothballing. You can really see how the paint is weathered and chipped. This would be uh, about 12 years since she was last in service in uh, 1969. These are some great before shots before the work is done. I wonder if that's what the guy thinks he's doing. So uh, look at how rusty this is right now, and then here it is after she gets out of Long Beach. We've got a shot of an interior hatch. Uh, typically when the ship is mothballed, only one exterior door is left openable to access the ship. Here you can see the guns at zero degrees elevation where they're normally stored in mothballing. You can see that they're plugged. Uh, it looks like those are her Vietnam Tompions in there, not the uh, cover that you see elsewise. Yeah. Yeah, you can see that the star's just been covered up with caulk or something to preserve it. Notice that the bridge windows are covered and the antennas above the bridge have been removed. Her antenna, her radar antenna for the main battery fire control director isn't there. A lot of this, uh, the five inch antenna is not there. So a lot of those uh, perishable things have been removed. You can see that the deck is not in great shape. And there are her alarms. If she has a float alarm go off or somebody opens the gate and sets off the alarms, it lets the shipyard staff know uh, that the ship needs to be inspected. On the right hand side, you can see Missouri on the other side of the pier. There's a good shot of her. She's still got the igloos over her 40 millimeter guns. New Jersey has already lost her as being activated for Vietnam. Here you are looking at the Wildcats and Capstans, the ship's ground tackle system. Anybody else getting seasick from the slight side to side rocking? There on the left hand side of the screen is the rhinoceros horn used to help move the anchor chain on the deck. I wonder if that's a spare one they had lying around or if it's just been sitting out on deck for the 12 years the ship's been mothballed here. It does seem like they've pulled up uh, this anchor chain, and that may be why the rhinoceros horn has been pulled out. On the left-hand side, you can see an Essex-class carrier. I'm not quite sure which one is next to uh, New Jersey there when she's in Bremerton. Here we are at the extreme bow, looking down at the uh, rhinoceros horn and the anchor chain from the other direction. New Jersey, of course, is the only Iowa at this point with a discomb cage antenna, 
which is that uh, pipe work structure that goes over the anchor chains there. The other three Iowas will receive them when they're reactivated during the 80s. There's a rhinoceros horn. Look at that glamour shot. Some really interesting uh, choices made with what we're filming here. Oh yeah, look at that wheel. Does not actually roll that well. That, that, those wheels are very stiff. If you look over at Missouri on the right, you can see she's got signal flags up and there's some, looks like civilians walking around on her. Being the surrender ship, it seemed like Missouri got a lot of traction and they would often open her main decks for um, visitors to check her out. New Jersey seems to be more complete because people would take souvenirs from Missouri and not from New Jersey. These shots of the teak really show how bad of a shape they're in and how bad the uh, metal structures around the teak are. All right, they've got the caulk off one of the stars on the Tompion. A mooring line. There's a nice artsy shot of Missouri's name tag on her gangway. Yeah, her time in Bremerton, Missouri, really was used as a uh, proto-museum ship. She wasn't open inside, there weren't exhibits, but they did let people on board. And you can see between signal flags, the awning, things like that, that the ship is set up to accommodate guests, which you just don't see with other mothball ships today. Some nice uh, eight or 10 inch mooring line right there. Ooh, look at that braid. All of the portholes are covered with their battle ports to prevent UV light from getting inside the ship. There's a strong, hmm, not enough light there to see what that space actually is. This chain is significantly smaller than the anchor chain. I'm not quite sure what it's attached to. Maybe the third time is the charm. More chain. Yeah. I'm not entirely sure what uh, makes this interesting, but it seems like the uh, cinematographer has some vision in mind for these shots. Are we gonna do the same thing with the mooring lines now? Can you imagine if we hadn't sped this up to 200%? Yep, we're doing the same thing with the mooring lines, folks. Stick with me, I'm told that there is cooler footage at the end of this. We are going up the gangway. Uh, these sorts of cages are often used on uh, ships in mothballs and they are often alarmed. Remember that alarm panel we saw at the front of the ship? Not quite sure what we're looking at here, but it is Bremerton. It does rain all the time. Oh, our cinematographer's into bird watching. Any of you uh, bird peepers out there familiar with that species? Oh, he's got friends. I was like that my first couple of times on camera too.
Look at that flaking paint. Let's zoom in on that corrosion. One of the major tasks when a ship is dry docked is uh, sandblasting basically the whole hull above and below the water line. So when you pull the ship out of mothballs, pretty much all that old paint has to go. Plus, at this point, they would also be remediating for lead-based paint, which was likely used as a primer uh, as recently as her Vietnam commission, and which is mostly removed during her 80s commission. It takes approximately 650 tons of paint to paint an Iowa-class battleship inside and out. Some nice artsy shots here. Oh, we're going up the anchor chain again. Here we go, folks. Did we do it in one take? Did we get it in one? Uh, and down the other side. Look at that growth along the waterline, yikes. The other reason you dry dock the ship, you blast all that off. It's called a shave and a haircut. Hey folks, did you know the ship was chained up when she was in Bremerton? Next video we do, we'll speed up to 300%. This video report will be put up on December 28th on recommissioning day. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. They're using rope as chafing gear to keep the uh, chain from metal and metal. Um, abrading the uh, mooring point there. Mix of chains and mooring line. Nice view of Missouri in the background. Oh, there's the uh, boat crane, the former aviation crane laid down in the background center of the uh, shot. They just laid it flat on the deck for use again. Here we are looking up at the aft superstructure. Again, all the major antennas have been removed. They would either be put on the deck inside the ship, or most likely in this case, because we haven't seen them anywhere, uh, in a warehouse there in Bremerton to be pulled out when needed again. There's definitely going, something going on. You can see all these workers walking around the deck of the ship, and that is not the case when she is normally uh, just sitting there mothballed. And they've got several of the doors open up uh, to the interior, which again, not the case for a mothballed ship. We are now on the uh, O2 level at the expansion joint amidships, looking through a breezeway. And that is looking forward with the uh, forward smokestack on the left-hand side and the five-inch gun on the right-hand side of the screen. Those circles, uh, more or less in the middle of the frame right now, are not portholes. They're some of the ventilation holes, um, one of the air intakes for the boilers inside of there. Here we are in the bridge. Uh, earlier shots showed the bridge still covered up like mothballed ships are. And here, those uh, pieces of plywood that covered the bridge have been removed. 
your anometer, wind direction indicator, and some of the other uh, gauges there on the bridge. These might be uh, rudder angle indicators. Plexiglass covered uh, sheet up there so you can write on it and grease pencil. There's the captain's chair on the starboard side of the bridge wing. It's interesting that the wood grating is left down during this mothballing or has been reinstalled. During her 1990s mothballing, the wood grating was all stored elsewhere on the ship. And the museum only recently found it and reinstalled it. The iconic shot looking out of the uh, bow of the ship. During Vietnam, turret number two had a 62 painted on it. So this has been painted again while the ship was in mothballs at some point over the 12 years. So look at the uh, forward superstructure with the antennas for her original ECM that only New Jersey got. Those will be removed during the 1980s and replaced with a slick 32 ECM. Here we are from higher up on the ship, probably the 08 bridge. Looking down on the main deck forward, you can see the top of the conning tower there. Some workers up at the bow. Even from up here, eight stories above, you can see how worn out that teak wood is. Nice view aft. You can see the uh, former 40 millimeter positions there on midships. Those are gonna be plated over with new stuff in the 80s. Looking in at the uh, 04 level bridge from the outside starboard side, notice all of the handles for cranking down the windows are currently installed. Some of the five inch battery. Where those guns elevate are known leaking issues. So you can see they've built a metal box around that. The Navy vacillated between putting rubberized canvas bloomers on them or not. Uh, and finally accepted that the bloomers didn't do anything for that particular size of gun and they just leaked all the time. So they removed them. Yeah, this area looks like it's been recently painted or else that paint coating is in really great shape. If we get perfect surface prep conditions, we expect a, a, a system of coatings to last about 10 years. At this point, New Jersey would have been in mothballs here in Bremerton for about 12 years. So that paint should be uh, pretty badly wasted. So there you have it, the uh, initial footage of the ship while she was in Bremerton, looked like from uh, July of 1981 before she gets towed to Long Beach to be reactivated. New Jersey is of course chosen because she's in the best material condition because she had been active just 12 years before. Whereas uh, for Missouri, it had been nearly 30 years since she had been most recently active uh, and only a little bit less for Iowa and Wisconsin. This is up today because it is the 40th anniversary of the ship being recommissioned in 1982. This is the only time a sitting president commissioned a battleship when President Reagan uh, brought New Jersey into commission. And so we can see how much work they did between July of 81 and December of 82. We've got more footage in this series that's been digitized recently. Uh, and let us know in the comment section down below if you're interested in seeing more of it. I can't promise that there won't be more artistic shots of Anchor Chain, but I know from watching uh, documentaries and things like that that there is more footage in this series uh, that I've seen elsewhere. So I'm interested in continuing. If you're interested, let us know in the comment section down below. Also, let us know what you thought was the most interesting thing to see in this footage. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to continue donating to support the museum. We're not only restoring the ship, we're restoring footage of the ship like this thanks to our volunteers. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about us and our museum. Thanks for watching.